So the final part of this week's Wrestling with Jonathan, Jamie, we're going to answer a few listener questions. So thinking back to this week's uh, AEW, we spoke about it earlier on in our Dynamite recap. There, there was some criticism online from some fans of uh, Cody Rose saying that um, um, he only has a good match when there's uh, when there's blood involved or when there's potentially a gimmick uh, involved in his match. And this leads us very nicely to the, the first set of questions. Now, in fact, we've got two questions that are very similar. Um, Ashley Clements asks, uh, what's uh, our opinion of, uh, of blood being used in wrestling nowadays? And uh, do certain matches need it? And then Kieran Reed goes on to ask um, our thoughts on Cody. Uh, taking you know major spills, uh, the, the lashes from a couple of weeks ago and bleeding, um, is it necessary or is it is it what he needs as he's not in the title picture at the moment? So kind of you know Cody, um, he does tend to bleed quite a bit in in his matches and involved in a few gimmick matches. But is that what Cody needs uh, to be successful in AEW? And uh, uh, what, what are your thoughts on some of the questions being asked there? Uh, first of all, I do think blood has a, a place in wrestling. But in, in the right moment, like, obviously, it was a cage match. I'm all for a bit of blood in a cage match. If you're some, some guys were in my head into a steel cage and I aren't bleeding, it, it's not believable for me. Sure. You're having your head into a steel cage. So I, I'm all for a bit of blood in the right circumstances. And a cage match is the perfect environment to have a bit of blood. Um, I don't think Cody needs to rely on it. Uh, he's a fantastic in-ring talent. He's clearly over... Um, he, he obviously, maybe he, that's just what he thinks adds more to the match. Um, I don't know, I'm not Cody. But as for the blood, yeah, it's definitely got a place in the right circumstances. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the cage match, I think it was perfect. If someone's running my head into, into steel, I'm going to bleed. So it's, so it's believable. Yeah, yeah, totally agree, and and I, I'm with the you know the same uh, mindset as yourself. I think that blood has a place in wrestling still. Um, obviously, we don't see it so much in uh, WWE or, or NXT, but certainly AEW, and it does help to add to that drama. I mean, if you think back to when Cody took on his brother Dustin Rhodes at Double or Nothing last May, and Dustin he bled like a stuffed pig pig basically you know he bled all over the place but that added to the drama that added to you know the, the tension of the match and the reality of the match and it worked for that match and i think that if it's used under the right circumstances and not every single show um i think if it's used sparingly under the right circumstances for the right type of match and you know for a, a big blow off match to a feud potentially then i think it has its place as you described, it was a steel cage match this past Wednesday. So, yes, it, it possibly did have or uh, was warranted during that match. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Cody, he doesn't want to overdo it. He doesn't want to bleed in too many matches because it will become a little bit of a, you know, uh, something that's going to wear thin with the fans. But if you look at some of the situations where he has bled, it's been hard way. The, the, the chair shot from Sean Spears, I think he bled heavily from that. And I, I think that that wasn't meant to have uh, happened the way it did. And of course, when he took that dive over the top rope, when he was fighting, now was it his match against Jericho at All In um, or Full Gear, one of those matches, but where he cut his head on the ramp way that was pretty nasty and that was unintentional so there's a couple of occasions that you could kind of take out of the conversation where they were hard way and weren't scripted to, to happen that way um but uh yes yeah, so I, I kind of understand what they're saying on social media and what you know ashley's getting across there um or, or kieran's getting across there with the fact that cody taking a lot of punishment and bleeding in quite a few of his matches um and is it a way to get himself over because he's not in, in the title picture at the moment but um like I say, a couple of them occasions could be taken out of the conversation because of how they happened. But uh, any final thoughts on this one? No, no. Like just again, like I said, um, I'm all for blood when it's warranted, like a cage match. Um, uh, Cody, like I said, Cody's over. Cody's mega over. He doesn't need to rely on things like that. Um, again, with the with the lashes, I thought the lashes was a nice touch. To be honest, he's he's that desperate to get his hands on MGF he would go to that extreme length. You know, it, it fit in for me perfectly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm on, I'm on board for a bit of blood, you know, the lashes when it's warranted. Uh, and as for Cody, yeah, the, the guy's a star. He doesn't need to rely on that. 
Uh, the next question from Broken But Glorious Wrestling Podcast. So uh, some great guys are going to have Broken But Glorious on the Wrestling With Jonas podcast in March. So can't wait to have them on board. But uh, uh, they ask, uh, how would you book The Fiend versus Goldberg? Uh, match length, uh, basic story, uh, winners. So, I mean, I've given this some thought. And, uh, and the reason why I decided to kind of add this question into this week's episode of uh, the Wrestling With Jonas podcast is because there's two names there that uh, that are kind of iconic in themselves you've got the fiends who's been quite impervious uh, to a lot of punishment that's been dished out in uh, the, in the few matches that he has had and regardless of whether it's a ladder or a toolbox or a steel chair or a, a giant mallet he's kind of got up pretty much every single time fought back and managed to defeat his uh, opponent and then you've got Goldberg who's who's a legend uh, got a, a fantastic record behind him got uh, an iconic status behind him as well and with the way they've been building the fiends and you don't expect him to lose championship before WrestleMania. So it's interesting to kind of think how this match might go. Of course, you know, you can't pin the fiends uh, so close to WrestleMania. And on the other hand, I don't think it would be right to have Goldberg losing as well, because I don't think he's uh, flying all the way out to Saudi Arabia to lose. So I don't know whether there's going to be some shenanigans, whether there's going to be some interference um, or potentially could it be some sort of, uh, you know, uh, inconclusive finish, maybe a count out or a disqualification. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I, I, I'm intrigued by this question purely because of the individuals involved and kind of what we know about them and how I'm not expecting Goldberg to, to lose too easily. I'm not expecting the Fiends uh, to lose too easily. So it's kind of a bit of a stalemate, really. But uh, any thoughts on this one, Jamie? Yeah, I, I kind of I'm kind of with you on that one. If I was booking it myself, then I would actually have the Fiend destroy Goldberg. I would I would actually have him beat him quite convincingly. Because I, I fear that once the fiend has been defeated, it's kind of done. It's like what else is there? Yeah, that's you, the mystique it, gone then, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So if I was booking it, I would book the fiend to annihilate him. I would have him beat him easily um, and quickly. Uh, like you, I don't see it happening. I, I I feel like they're saving the fiend for Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. But if, if I was booking it, yes, I would I would have the fiend destroy Goldberg uh in quite quick time as well. Mm. Yeah, very interesting, very interesting. Um, and I, I must admit, I'm, I'm not that interested in the in the Saudi show that's going to be taking place. There's a couple of matches that's got my interest, certainly uh, Ricochet versus Brock Lesnar that I'll probably catch, and maybe this one. Um, but on the whole, I won't be watching the entire event. And then that leads us to our final question uh, from uh, from Mags. We've had Mags on the show quite a few times, uh, part of the, the Badlands pod, of course. And, and Mags asks, um, does AEW need a mid-card title? So... Obviously, AEW is still in its infancy, still, you know, only into its kind of second year. You could say it, it was only announced as being a thing in January 2019. So it's only just completed its first full year. Um, it's only done about three or four pay-per-views so far. We're obviously leading towards uh, Revolution next weekend. But uh, Mags asks, asks, does AEW need a mid-card title? And now, I personally believe that it does. I think that, uh, that it's got a growing roster. It's got a lot of talent there that's uh, not really involved in the title picture. You've obviously got um, very talented singles wrestlers such as Kenny Omega and Adam Page being involved in a tag team, uh, the tag team title and tag team feuds at the moment, which keeps them busy. But if they weren't, then it makes you wonder, you know, whether there's enough individual feuds out there to keep them busy storyline wise uh, without a, a secondary title. Um, I think that eventually, and it may not be this year, um, they will get a mid, mid card title. I don't know whether it will focus on a, a particular stipulation or particular gimmick um, but I, I do think there needs to be like an intercontinental style um, belt for the rest of the roster to feud around obviously you're going to have your top tier talents like the Moxies and the Jerichos and the Codys fighting after the, the you know the, the world title uh, but then you've got kind of the, the mid card people maybe uh, you know your packs and uh, maybe your uh, Joey Janellas, for example going after a secondary title but uh, I'd really like to see that I do think they need it and I do think we'll see it uh, maybe not this year though but uh, Jamie your thoughts on a mid card title for AEW yeah, I totally agree. I don't think it's something we'll see soon, but I think it's something we will see in the future. Uh, and I, again, I agree with you totally. I think it's something needed. Uh, they've got a stacked roster. Uh, you mentioned Georgie Nella. Uh, I'm a huge Sean Spears fan. Uh, it's, you know, a guy like Sean Spears yeah. would be a great, a great guy to have in that mid-card title feud. Um, I, I, I truly think it will happen. 
I, I think I heard some a while back with Cody doing an interview saying that there, there, there have been di- discussing a secondary title. And when we'll get that, I don't know. But I think, yes, they definitely need one. There's enough guys on the roster to feud over a mid-card title. And I think I think it will work. I think it will happen. I just don't know when it will happen. Yeah, I mean, another title that uh, I think would play quite well in AEW is, is maybe a trios title as well. Because you've got a lot of groups, you've got a lot of factions. Um, you know, you could potentially yeah. uh, throw in a, a trio trios title there because they do pride themselves on tag team wrestling and uh, adding that uh, other element to tag team wrestling with with the, with the trios uh, championship could yeah, work yeah. as well in an organisation like AEW. I'd be happy with that. Exactly. Yeah. And you've got a few trios. I mean, you've got best friends in Orange Cassidy. You know, there's SCU. Uh, I think that could work. I, I'd yeah. be down for that. I think that'd be a really good idea. So you've got uh, the Dark Order, of course. You've got uh, the yeah. Jurassic Express and uh, quite a few others. But uh, that could work as well. 